Over the next few videos, we'll start looking at meaning. In particular, the meaning of words, or lexical semantics. And the first question we should ask is, what is a word? A word is basically composed of two parts, the signifier and the signified. The signifier is the string of phonemes that makes up um, a word. For example, the sounds of a word in a spoken language or the visual shape of a word in a sign language. So for example, this object is associated with the signifier rose. This is one part of a word. The other part of a word is the signified, the meaning, the mental idea that we have about this object. In philosophy, by the way, this is called the intention. So a rose is, first of all, this object here, which has petals, which is red, which is a flower. And it is also connected to other ideas. For example, roses involve romantic feelings, feelings of affection, feelings of longing. Roses can also involve feelings of pain. They have thorns, both uh, physical and metaphorical, and so forth. So the word rose has two parts. The sequence of phonemes that you use to produce it, and the mental images that are evoked when you say rose. Both of these are independent from the referent, which is the actual object in the real world. This is the biological object which comes out of a plant and has certain pigments and so forth. So there's, by the way, in philosophy, this is called the extension. So words have two parts, the signifier and the signifier. By the way, for the overwhelming majority of words, the connection between these two is arbitrary. There's nothing in this biological object that is inherently associated with the sound r or with the vowel o. This object came to be called a rose for arbitrary reasons. There's no particular reason why it could be called a rose and not something else. It's just that now that the connection is made, we have historically, persistently, throughout the community of speakers of English, insisted on in calling this rose. So let's take a, uh, a closer look at the meaning of words. Let's say this is a human. Can I ask you to describe what a human is? One way to describe it, which is described to Plato, is that a human is a being without feathers and that is biped. So in terms of features, it would be minus feathers plus biped. In phonology, we studied features as a way to distinguish between one sound and another. For example, some sounds are plus voiced, some are minus voiced. We're going to use the idea of features to distinguish between the meanings of words. So humans could be described in some universe as being minus feathers and plus biped. Let's take a look at this universe, which consists of three objects. There is man, woman, and dog. If we wanted to use a featural system to describe them, maybe we could use these features. In this universe, man is a human with no hair. As you can see, there's no hair on the person's head. If you wanted to describe woman, it would be a human with hair because in this particular universe, the woman does have hair and the man does not. And if you wanted to describe the dog, you could describe dog as minus human and plus hair, because you can see that the puppy has a little bit of hair. So you could use features to describe um, the meanings of the words in a certain universe. For example, you could use these features to distinguish between these three words. Let's have some fun with features. Let's say we have three words, which I have decomposed here into their signifiers, and they're signified. There's the word dog, which is, has the signifier dog, this chain of phonemes. And the signified is the mental ideas that you have when you see this animal, which we're going to describe with one feature plus animal. There's a cat, which as you can see is this little fella, so the signifier is the string cat, and the signified is all of the ideas that you get when you hear this string of phonemes. And then there's bird as the signifier, 
and then the signified is all of the ideas that you get when you hear bird, which we're going to summarize with the emoji. All of these are plus, plus, plus animal. This is a good feature because it describes them, but it doesn't help us distinguish between them. So why don't you try to come up with a feature system that could help us distinguish between dog, cat, and bird. Propose a few features, and remember that, for uh, for example, for some of the features, dog has to, be, has to be plus something, and the other one's minus something, or the other way around, then where you can use a few features to distinguish between these animals. Please pause the video. What did you come up with? So there's many ways to describe them. One could be that dogs are plus canine, and then everything else is minus canine. Notice that you could have, could have also said that this one is plus feline, and all the others are minus feline. So plus canine would help us distinguish between dog and everything else. But we also need another feature to distinguish between a cat and a bird. And we could use can fly. For example, a bird is plus can fly, and a cat would be minus can fly. And the dog obviously would also be minus can fly. So in this feature system, dog is plus plus minus, plus minus minus for cat, plus minus plus for bird. We can distinguish the meanings using features. Let's take a look at an even closer look at meaning. So let's say we have a bird and this uh, mental image of the bird could be, could be described as an animal that is not canine and that can fly. So we have like a core idea of what a bird is. But that core idea does not correspond to all birds. There are birds that can't fly. For example, penguins or kiwis or ostriches. So the meanings of words must be composed of some central idea, but also of fuzzy edges. Fuzzy edges where you could have examples for the word where some of them are closer to the core and some of them maybe don't meet all of the characteristics but could still be thought of as being birds. For example, penguins, which can't fly, but they're still on the edge of being a bird. We call these fuzzy meanings. Types of meanings that have fuzzy edges around them and that have words that maybe belong, maybe not. What about if we change the feature? Maybe it would work. Not really. Maybe we could change can fly to plus feathers. But even then, uh, birds can molt feathers and be featherless for a while. And some birds can get diseases where they have no feathers. So in this system, these creatures would be minus feathers. And so they would not be birds. They wouldn't meet the definition. So whatever meaning is, it cannot just be a strict set of binary uh, features for definitions. It must be that plus examples of what the word is that go progressively towards the edges of what we're willing to accept as bird. We're going to call this core a prototype. So the meanings of words must be composed of some prototype which is like our idea of what a bird is, which can be described with some features, and then fuzzier edges around the meaning, which have examples of um, you know, objects in the real world that are birds, but that maybe don't meet all of the characteristics of the prototype. So this prototype and the fuzzier edges around it are all going to be the composition of the meaning bird. In summary, words have two main parts, the signifier, which is the sequence of phonemes, and the signified, which is the meanings associated with the sequence of phonemes. These two are connected in an arbitrary way. There's no reason why this flying animal ev evokes the sound b or bird. It just is connected arbitrarily. The meaning itself can be described as features, but those features only uh, refer to some prototype, some mental prototype that we have for the word. The meaning must be composed of that and also progressively fuzzier edges 
of exemplars that we're also willing to incorporate into the meaning of bird. For example, penguins, which don't fly, but are kind of birds. In the next video, we'll look more at the connections between words and how those fuzzy edges interact.